The last thing that uh, I will conclude this introductory uh, series on uh, TiddlyWiki is uh, how to secure your data uh, and store it on the cloud. Um, you know, that's initially why I even started looking into using TiddlyWiki. I wanted to get away from leaving all of my notes uh, scattered on the cloud. And, you know, it just seems like every other week in the news, uh, data is, uh, is being hacked and lost and sitting on servers where they shouldn't be. And, uh, you know, that's very detrimental. I mean, if anybody's storing information on the cloud, uh, hopefully um, it's, uh, you know, all of these experiences have given you some realization that you really need to be responsible about the data that you store on the cloud and know that it isn't safe. It isn't always safe. So um, one of the things that you can do is encrypt TiddlyWiki before you store it on the cloud. So if it's stored on the cloud in encrypted format, it doesn't matter if someone uh, gets access to your uh, data or to everyone's data in general. Um, the data that they have access to isn't actionable because they can't crack it. Um, there is a, a really great piece of software that I use that uh, helps me on this process, and that's InkFS. Um, InkFS is uh, what it does is it creates a. Um, you have two directories. You have a directory that you're going to store your encrypted data in, and you have another directory that you're actually going to work out of and use. And all the data that you save in that working directory gets instantly um, encrypted and saved in that encrypted directory. Well, that encrypted directory could be like Dropbox. So, um, for instance, uh, we're looking at uh, this uh, notebook directory here, for instance. Let's say that, uh, um, you know, let's, let's say that I create um, a directory and, uh, and uh, I want everything in this notebook directory to be mirrored in Dropbox, but I want this data to be uh, encrypted. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that before I confuse myself. Um, first thing that you're going to do is uh, create uh, two directories that you're going to work with. The first directory is going to be, for instance, like Dropbox directory, right, that you're storing this data in. Let's say inside Dropbox, I've got a new directory called um, Notebook. And this is where I'm going to store all my notes. And I want this notebook directory to have all of my encrypted data in. And then now I've got to create a new blank directory called, um, let's just say that it's a different directory. This is my, uh, my working directory. Now, keep in mind, this working directory needs to be empty before this process starts. And here's the reason why. Because when you restart your machine, this working directory will be blank again. Whatever you had put into this working directory is going to be gone. So when you restart your machine, this directory will be empty. You have to run a command that I'm going to show you to reinitialize and get all of your data back because all of your data is actually being stored here in an encrypted format. So let's uh, let's uh, show you how this works. So first of all, um, I want to start in this directory. And uh, I'll just do a PWD. You can see that I'm inside this notebook directory. This notebook directory is where I want to store my encrypted data. Now, the next directory is my working directory. And inside that directory is where I'm actually going to work inside of. The files that I want encrypted are going to go in that directory. Anything that I want to uh, make sure is safe is going to go inside that directory. So there is a program that I use to do that with, and it's called InkFS. And you can download and install it in, um, in Windows and Unix. You can also install it in, um, in a Mac. I use Homebrew for that. I'm not going to go into how you use Homebrew. You'll have to go to some other videos for that. But uh, in, uh, in Homebrew, um, 
you know, if you just do a search in Homebrew for InkFS, you can see that it's available to install. Another thing that you can need to think about when you're using Windows or Mac, um, the format uh, that gets created here, the data gets created in, um, isn't natively compatible to Windows or Mac. And in Mac, what I do uh, is uh, I install what's called OS X Fuse. How this thing works is it actually creates a partition or you know a temporary partition or drive in X2 format, which isn't native to, to Mac. And that's, uh, that format is um, what this working directory is going to be converted into. I'm just going to show you. So inkfs, there's only, uh, this is all you have to do to, to make this work. You type inkfs, you take the directory that you want this data to be inside. Let's say we're going to take the directory, the notebook directory. This is in your Dropbox folder, notebook. This is the directory where I want this data to be encrypted in. That's where it's going to live. But I need a working directory that I'm going to be actually working with the real files in. And that's this working directory there. All I'm doing is I'm hitting enter to initialize this process. And here it's asking me, okay, how do you want to encrypt this data? You can do all sorts of great things. You can even combine things like a Blowfish. If you really want to know how to use InkFS, I'd suggest you probably go to another YouTube uh, tutorial on that. There's plenty of great ones. I'm actually going to leave a link in the description field. So check those out. Check those links out. If uh, for this, uh, for what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to hit P for paranoia. And what that is, it's just a standard 256-bit encryption. And then I'm going to type in my password. This is initiate. This is going to take a minute too. Just keep in mind that um, um, it's going to take a minute for this to start. Um, you know, for this, uh, you know, for this item to be created. But once it's done, you'll see it looks like a drive because it is a drive. We've just created a temporary drive that we're going to start working in and putting our data in. And um, if you look inside your notebook, everything that's in this drive is going to start being translated there. So I'm going to take my, uh, my wiki that I've been working on. I'm going to drag it over to this uh, working drive. I've dragged it in there, and instantly, it's been um, encoded and put there. So th that's great. I can now go in here and delete this, move it to trash, and now my wiki is safely in this drive. Now, like I said, when I reboot my machine, this drive is going to be gone. So is my data, but this is still going to be here. You have to run this command line exactly the same way every time you want to access your data. It might be an extra step that you're not interested in doing. You might be looking for ways to automate the process. Most people that you uh, that will probably talk to you about this prefer the occlusion here because they're trying to keep their data safe anyway. They don't mind making the extra step to, uh, to secure their data. So they know that when they turn on their computer and they want access to this data, they're going to have to run this line to get uh, to re um, to reinitialize and and uh, decrypt this data and it loads this drive decrypts this data and puts it back in there so that how that's how it works and so when I go to uh, edit this data uh, again I'm going to open this up in Firefox and uh, here's uh, you know he here it is right here. It's in my working directory. I'm going to close the one that I had worked on before. And any updates that I do here are going to be saved here and instantly um, encrypted and saved on my Dropbox, which is syncing. So um, it's just a great way, easy way, for you to uh, secure your data on the cloud and not have to worry about uh, you know that data getting into the wrong hands.